Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Oh, and so I talked to Terry about GSOC stuff, and uh, she said, yeah, she still just uh, hasn't updated the website yet. So, I think it's updated because I remember seeing it yesterday or today. Okay, let's see. Let's just make sure. Yay, there we go. Yes, so we're on there. And the idea is page points to 2020. Great. Contact points to... Great. Get her. All right, perfect. So all is well there. So let's, that can be our first note for today. So Python GS... I'll see page um, uh, projects page now lists TFF. Okay, great. Um, and today is February 18th. Great. Um, let's see. Let's just quickly go over. Um, let's see who's on. Um, okay, so from last week. Uh, let's see, we've got the GSOC, um, I still haven't finished the cheesy marketing email, um, let's see, um, okay, we, yeah, okay, that was last week, we got the TensorFlow, um, TensorFlow hub model got merged, I just merged that this morning, so thank you. Manchu, that was very cool. Very cool stuff there. So, let's see. So. All right, yeah, NLP stuff. Very cool. Um, that'll be exciting to play around with. I had somebody who approached me the other day and was wondering how to do some, like, natural language processing stuff. Um, he wanted to do the reverse, too, and, like, generate sentences um, of a certain <laughs> sentiment. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm not sure quite how to do that one yet, um, but I'm sure someone will figure that out. There's got to be some papers that do something like that. Um, yeah, so. he can build that little bit. For yeah. Now he can do that. Yeah. <laughs> For now he can do one way, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's see. And then, okay, let's see. What else did we get from last week? Let's make sure we recap. Um, the vocal rabbit. Uh, so I haven't done. Yeah, this, yeah, this will take uh, one or two more days for me. Okay, cool. Uh, so. um, and then did we get it? Did you get it building on the CI? I can't remember. Um Let's see. Um, did you get it building on the CI? Uh, no. Okay. No, no, I haven't done anything in the CI. Okay, cool. cool. Okay, I'll check that. No worries. Okay, and then I still owe the exporting code. All right, and then. Um, oh, yeah, I, I forgot this. That I have to do this. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Here, I, I check this out. let's make uh, let's put it in the pull request because we're we're uh, yeah we're 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 not as as uh, organized as we could be here. Sometimes I just make the notes in the meeting docs, you know. So, and then we forget to transfer them to the pull request for the issue. Um, let's see. Yeah, I will do this. I will do this tonight itself. Let me see. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I added the comment there, so let's see. You now we can yeah, track there. Be a little bit easier to track than the stupid Google Docs back and forth. Okay, um, and then other than that, um, I haven't talked to Justin lately, but we need to check in with him on that pull request there. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Sudarsana grabbed an issue, but I think she's been kind of busy, so I haven't heard from her. So she was working on something. I can't remember what it is, but she's out working on that. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Um, 
much. Uh, yeah, all right. All right, I think we're ready to just like tackle everything for this week then. Um, so, uh, Saksham, you said you wanted to talk about the, you had some questions on the MNIST. And yeah, what, so, yeah. So the thing is, uh, I have, uh, I found a way to like uh, read the PNG or JPEG files into ND arrays. But uh, I don't know what you mean by like config loader stuff. I'm not sure what that means. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's see. What do you uh, do? You have the code posted anywhere? Uh no. Like uh, okay. Okay. It doesn't really matter. We'll probably get down a rabbit hole if we start looking at code. Um. So <laughs> let's see. So you so you found a way to read the PNG or JPEG files into the ND arrays. Right, so now the trick is, um, so putty, where's putty? Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, where it is? Okay, here we go, perfect. All right, um, am I sharing still? Yes, I am sharing. Okay, and am I recording still? Yes, I am recording. Great. Okay. Um, oh, and this is a whole other thing that I was on. All right. Okay. And we we're going to do config loader stuff. Okay. Uh, let me get rid of this real quick. Make that syntax work. Okay. Okay. That's fine. We won't run this test. All right. So, um, oops. Sorry, too many windows open. I was in the middle of something. All right, so the config loader, what I was talking about there is config YAML. Let's see, or let's just make a new one and, and we can kind of go through how that might work. So, or let's just look at it. Um, so config YAML. Default config YAML config.py. Okay, so basically, the way that the config loaders work is uh, it basically it, it's it's just it's it's just an abstraction around something like you know JSON loads or uh, JSON dumps, right? And so for YAML, we we do the same thing with the YAML load and YAML dump, um, and this is the YAML one, obviously. Um, so um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make one that's like, you know, PNG or JPEG load. And then, uh, and so you'll have load and dump, right? Um, and you'll want to serialize in whatever format. And, and so the reason why they're load B and dump B is because you, we're, uh, we're expecting them to be bytes. So we're, we're already set up to do um, what, what you're going to be doing here, which is, which is loading in bytes. Um, and so basically, bas what you'll need to do is, is you can... When you create the new config loader plugin for this one, um, so you'll do, you know, the, let's see, cd config, and then you'll do dffml uh, server. Uh, yeah, I created the png config file. Okay. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to work around that. I'm very confused on that thing. Okay, very confused on what? Sorry. Which like part? passing the passing the PNG file, okay, and, uh, from uh, the command line, uh, and then using okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's yeah, and here's the other step, and let, let, let me make sure that we've we've documented this all a after we're done here. But so uh, let me find the right issue so we can make sure that it's as descriptive as it should be, because I think we might have just. I I'm pretty sure we just took the meeting minute notes and pasted them in the issue. So especially if. It's been a the while. The last now. time the call got cut off. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, this wasn't. We didn't. We didn't really capture well. What it was we three seventy one? Three seventy one. Three seventy one. Okay, so complete the CSV source modification in addition to config loader, some image format that we can use. Okay, so so let me just pull up the 
the code in GitHub here too. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the DFFML, so the regular source stuff in the CSV source, we want to modify, okay, and the CSV source is like all sorts of a mess as we all know. Um, but basically what we wanna do is uh, we wanted to add another config section. So something under here that said, um, copy permalink, okay. So we wanted to add something, uh, config parameter, which says which columns to treat as files um, to be loaded via config loader of uh, uh, respective file type or file extension. So basically if you make a dot, like if the column is, uh, you know, contains a file name, so we'll, we'll add to this list here, like tag call, you know, is the, is the uh, uh oh, we forgot to keep that capitalized. Um, but I guess it's okay, it's consistent, but we should still fix that. Um, so, the basically, we're, we want a list of column names that are going to be loaded from, from config files. So, when we say, when we have a CSV file that looks like this, um, so uh, A, or let's see, um, key file name and then key is first file name is first dot yaml and then second and second dot yaml basically what we would do is if so example parameter or name of uh, like load files or something. So then on the command line, dffml uh, sources, or let's see, list repos sources um, uh, f equals csv source file name is, and this is like test.csv. So so test.csv and then source load files would be um, file name, right? So that's basically saying, so this column, I want you to load these files, right? In So basically read this file, load it with the appropriate fig, config loader and print it out, right? So, um, uh, let's see, uh, I can't remember how it's, what the format it's going to list the repos in, but, um, basically, you know, this will, this will print it out now. And so if we, we can run this right now and, and sort of like do this real quick to, to give you the idea of what it looks like now and then what it should look like. Right. So test.csv, let me just create this file. Okay, so dffml uh, list repos sources um, equal CSV source file name test.csv. Uh oh, do we have a problem? Looks like we might have a problem with our CSV source. Non type has no attribute, starts with. Looks like the CSV for the rest. Oh, no, that's why. The CSV file has an error. Okay. Second dot YAML. Oof, we should probably be careful on that one. All right. So it's printing out the sources. This is the first one. File name is first dot YAML. Predictions is undetermined. Um, we should probably change that formatting a little bit. But um, So then you'd say, like, source load files, right, uh, come on, dash, 
and then you'd say, um, what is that column? File name, right? And then right now it's obviously going to do nothing, but if we had things in first.yaml and second.yaml, and now I'm going to copy this stuff over so that we can, we can put it in here. So, yes, that's what we're looking for here. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. Basically, when you're done with this issue, what it's going to look like is whatever is in first.yaml and second.yaml will be printed there. So, let's just uh, create those files real quick, early, you know, say what those would be. So, first.yaml is YAML, uh, you know, like, hello, there, and then second.yaml might be uh, hi, or hello world, and hi there. And then you might see something like, okay, this is the first listing. Okay, so this is the first listing. So this is before this change, and now after this change. And we'll see in here, it'll probably print like this. Um, Hello, world, right, because it'll have read the contents, loaded it in via the config loader, and then be dumping it out um, when we're okay. printing the repo. Um, hi there. Um, okay. Let's just make sure this all looks right. So we modify this. We add this column. Here's these files, example files. Oh, let me change that one because it screwed up the comma there. Um, second diagonal. Okay, and then we list before, we list after we make the change. Basically, we look in load files. Load files tells us that this file name column is one where we want to look at read read that read the contents of that column like a file, uh, like a file name, and then based on the extension, we load the appropriate config loader and and read in the file. And the and that's actually been simplified. Um, so let's see, where'd that, uh, do you remember where that went, Agen, where did we, where did we were using that somewhere? Um, I'm sure, I think it's called config loader issue. Let's see, or, Wait, yeah, remember that one that you did that patch that, um, yeah. made this simpler? Um, commits. config loaders, that's what it was, load single file, is this where it was, or load file, let's see, oh yeah, and this added the export directory stuff, perfect, 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 okay, this, this is what it was, I think, okay, so yeah, we can reference this. Okay, so when I create the PNG config loader, it will load the uh, it will uh, load the uh, uh, image as the array, like the like by the code I've written. Yes, the, exactly. So you're gonna put that code into um. No, fuck, 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 no! Oh, oh okay, God, I'm so happy that GitHub always saves the body of the issue message. I'm always accidentally going to the wrong thing in the middle of creating an issue. All right, so, and, uh, and we'll pull it out of config YAML here just to, or we'll pull it out of config JSON because that's from standard library. Um, so, um, or we'll just pull it out of here. So, config, replace it pull package name. All right, so this right here, when you create it, oh, this is just doing AST. Okay, so copy permalink. So yeah, this was what uh, what was created when I wrote that command on the command line, and then I changed it to PNG, the misc thing. Yeah. What PNG? Yeah, uh, you changed it to what? To oh. PNG config loader. Concept. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. 
and then you're just gonna you know create a new config loader change the body the body of uh, load b um, to make it parse the to make it parse the bytes uh, into a valid array um, which you can should um, convert to list rather than uh, in the array uh, before returning uh, just in case the thing you're returning to doesn't import numpy right there we just want to leave it as a regular list and then they can convert it, convert it back into a numpy array if, if that's the way that the loading is working right um, okay. and then you'll need to modify CSV source it's okay so and then here's the so here is the example on how to let's see this is the test right but this will serve as the example for now um, so um, then modify um, CSV source to use config loaders um, to load the file name. Um, example. Oops. Oops. Example. Okay. Um, if the column or or for all columns in load files I think it was does that uh, does that clear things up at least for now you may things may get more confusing again once you get into CSV source um, but okay so it will uh, this will pass the PNG in, uh, into uh, as an as a list uh, yes, exactly. So load the PNG as as a list of you know whatever. Um, I mean, I'm uh, I'm only saying that because I'm assuming you're going to get an ND array or like an N, some kind of num numpy array out of it. I can do the two list to yeah things. yeah oh. exactly. So just convert it to a list before returning, just in case something doesn't understand numpy arrays because you know we, we they shouldn't have to understand numpy's numpy arrays since since that's not in the core. Um, Let's see. Um, so yeah, does that does that sound good for now? Yeah. So after that, when it will, like, how will we write that into the uh, command line for the predict uh, DFFML predict thing? It's basically just the same the same way that we're doing the sources right here when we're doing listing. Um, that's it's all the same command line parameters, right? So uh, we'll basically just when we when we have we'd have like a CSV file or something that would list all the the uh, the the, Im the images we want to predict on, and it would just be you know file names or something, and then you'd just say source load files, and then whatever that column name in that CSV file is. So you could have just the one. Um, let's see. Uh, right, come on. Uh, so for example, if we, uh, so this is test, right? So if we got rid of this first column here and we just said, uh, we did the same thing, it would just put, you know, numbers as the indexes into the files and, and they would have the only feature being loaded from the file is the file name. So, and then within that feature, this would be, uh, where's the MS digit stuff? So docs. Um, uh, okay, let's see. Use cases. MNIST. Oh, the tests are failing because I need to upload the new package that just got merged. Um, so here, right, when we're doing things like this this is for training, right? And we'll specify what are the sources, and it's combining the two sources um, so that we're getting all of the training data. And we labeled, right? We did what's the label, or what's the features features name, uh, right? And we said label and image, right? And so we'll just do something like um, for for the predict function, or like when we do DFFML predict, we'd be saying, um, you know, model features is 
image. So I guess what we'd do is we'd make the file name instead of file name, we'd have it be image, right? So it would be test.csv, and this would be image, and then pretty much this command line stuff stays the same, right? So now if you say source load files and then image, then it would go read the file, right, with the image data. So if we modified this and it was, you know, .png, um, so first .png and second .png, and then we said source load files equals image. You're adding this config loader stuff. It's going and it's reading that PNG file, first .png, loading in the bytes, and then you'll see an array here. And then in the second one, same thing. It loads in the bytes. You see an array. That's going to be the same thing that the, that the predict command sees because you're saying, you know, it's all the same parameters for model here. Anything with model hyphen is the same. But now sources, we're just saying... Uh, you know, images equals um, CSV, and then, uh, you know, we, we basically just change the sources to be the same things as in this list command here. Um, okay. And then that should, then it should take that data in, right, and say, okay, well, I'm being asked to use the feature data of image, and as so long as the, the, the column name is image that contains the, the now image data because it's replacing the file name with the image data, then the rest of these command line parameters will, will work fine. And then it should be able to give you the, you know, the, obviously the, the digit representation of that image. So does that sound good? We can probably, I mean, we'll, we'll iterate on this as we go, right? But uh, this should be, if you write the config loader, right? So next steps are basically finish writing the config loader. And then... That was the main confusion. Yeah. So that, this makes it a, this a, a makes very it. clear. Okay, great. Yeah, so, and then obviously hey. it gets confusing uh, with the CSV source, but yeah. Are we planning to have the CSV from the user itself? Uh, you mean the, the CSV file is input from the user? Yeah, so weren't yeah. we planning to lo like auto-generate the CSV file based on a folder that contains the image? Yeah, we talked about that. That was basically the directory config loader stuff. Um, and I think we got that working. Yeah, we did get that working uh, with the dirconf stuff. Um, so how would that... I mean, that's basically... that. So that works... As what it is right now, um, I think if you say dot, let's see, how does that work? If yeah, the if list, it was, if, yeah. if you want to have like, if you want to use the mnist, yeah, like said, based on the p based on pngs, and you have a folder. Oh, you have a folder. So you you won't be you won't be expecting to have the C, the csv. It would like, uh, you would you would have to write a whole script to. Oh, okay. Uh, make this file chat. Well, great. Okay, so, so then let's see. Um, let's see. The dirconf stuff basically just loads keys down. Um, so in that case, um, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to think. Does Agen, you implemented their dirconf stuff. So let's see. Where's the yeah, example so use? the file name. Like it has folder as the keys and file names. I yeah. think there was some test which shows an extra. Yeah, we should notes. have some tests. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so actually that was the test that we were just looking at. Actually, that's the one we just linked here. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. Um, config loader, dirconf.json. Okay, and this I is our doc string. Yeah. Oh, it does have a doc string. That's right. Does it? I don't know why. I don't know if it's in the issue or not. I also check it out. Uh, okay. So we just the the thing is, I'm just trying to think about okay, how do we make this match like what the sources do? Um, let's see, data. Yeah, it's in data, right? Or no, that was explore directories. It's basically what Dirkhoff does, though, is explore directories, right? So let's see. Yeah, so you have root, OK, dead beef, file one, call CM battle, and you get out. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, I remember how I had to write the doc string to make this thing pass. It's not uh, pretty. Um, it might be prettier to look at this. Uh, OK, 
So if you're doing this like a source, you would do, um, but okay. So here's the other thing. Um, we'd have to write a new source is the thing. So this exists, right? This functionality exists, but it exists within config loaders. Um, it doesn't exist within any of the sources, right? The, none of the sources use the config loaders class. Um, so if we wanted to point it at a directory, like Yash is saying, if we get this directory, um, then, and we wanted to just point it at the directory, then we'd have to say, uh, we'd still have to write that, that source. Um, and I think at this point, the source could just be like, uh, maybe directory and then the sub extension attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. This is I feel like I feel like we did all of this and then we had a reason why we were doing it one way and not the other way. Like a few weeks ago we had we had a reason why we ended up doing it the way that we did. Um, would it make sense to have a source that is like you point it uh, pointed out like directory PNG and it hopes to read every PNG file inside the directory? Yeah. That could make sense. I think that would make sense. I feel like we had a reason. Do you guys remember this, though? I feel like we had a reason why we ended up going one way and not that way. We were planning to use the CSV source that is already present, but I yeah. don't remember any further discussions. So yeah. what I... Another source wouldn't make sense, I guess, if you, if you just get this keyword directory CSV, it just directory png it just writes a csv file and takes the source as csv and generates that particular csv file yeah yeah okay so yeah so basically we, and this is this is yeah you're right okay so what happened was let me just recap so what happened was we were originally planning on doing the directory thing where it just reads all the files and then we thought for some reason, we, we thought, let's just put all the file names in a CSV file. And and now we're basically just thinking, let's go back to do the source. Let's just do one of these first. I think this is, let's just, let's just do one of these first. And let's just keep going with what we're doing. But let's make a note that we need to do both. Because... Um, we did, we ended up doing, we were started, we started on that path and there was some reason why we didn't do it. So let's just finish this one. And then, cause all, I remember you saying that we, we should use the sources that are already present and the best option was using CSV. Oh yeah. That might've been what happened. Yeah. I think that was also because of the directory config loader stuff wasn't done or something, but Either way, yeah, yeah, I think this that. will be I think this will be a minimal change right now. Um, whereas, uh, like, it should be it should be a pretty minimal change to use this config loader stuff. And then let's just make a note that um, note. Um, let's do, let's just make a note here that that we that we still want to do that 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 parsing the whole directory tree for images. Um, uh, after this is complete because there has to be other situations where people will want to put file names into the their csv file or whatever to read um so oh i remember what it was i remember what it was if you had the situation was basically if you had um if we had other data, right, the, the initial way that we were going to do it was basically, okay, you have a directory, right, and that's the main directory to look in, right, sort of just like the file name parameter. And then everything under that directory, like every subdirectory is the key of the, you know, the repo key, um, since we finally changed SRC URL to key. Um, so every subdirectory would be the repo key, and then every file name within that subdirectory is one of the features and then you parse the data based off of the config loader for that extension um, and I think what we might have realized was that then if you wanted to like do a training data set similarly to this MNIST example like where you've provided your own files what you would end up doing would be uh, you'd have like a, you know, a one dot int, right? And then we'd parse that like, or you'd have like a, a, a label dot, 
uh, what was it? Where were we? What are we calling this? Uh, yeah, label dot int, right? And that would that would be what the the feature called label would be the integer value, which is the correct uh, the correct label for this image, right? And so then you would end up with all of these files, um, right? You would have like a you would have a bunch of directories and a bunch of files, and so that would kind of just be annoying. Um, but then, of course, we can also do the thing where we load, uh, like we have two sources, and then you have the list of files, um, like the list of labels in, in like a CSV source, and then you have like, you know, the, the images and the directories. Um, but there's there basically, I think the reason was, was really because like if you just listed all the file names and then their labels, like, you know, here's what the label should be, here's what the file name for that label is in a CSV file. That seemed at the time like it was going to be more user friendly than creating all these directories and stuff. But we could also, of course, just create a different source where, you know, there is no, there is, I guess you would do like, you know, the file name, every, every image in this directory, the file name is the, the key for the repo and then you know you 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 come then you assign the label the same label to all the files i think the reason is is we went through this logic earlier and and there's like a few different conditions here whereas if we list them all in a csv file it, it's it's at least very clear what's happening um but let's let's just read let's just add this later basically so after this is complete, um, make a source which reads a directory. So what do you think? So Yash, if that is the way that you get the images, is they're just like files in a directory, then does it make the most sense to have that source where each file name is the key? Or how? what do you think makes sense then? Uh, I guess I'll look into some image data sets and uh, see what is the pattern and then let you know. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's... Because l labels is the problem. Yeah, that, uh, exactly. Yeah, that's I, why I think we ran into this earlier, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, so uh, I just wanted to give an input on this. So what TensorFlow and uh, Keras does is uh, it takes the directory name as the label for all the images. Mm. So like what we can do here is all yeah, the yeah, images yeah. in the directory they mm. will be the image name will be the key and the label for all of them will be the name of the directory okay so like all the docs images will be in the dog folder all the cats images will be in the cat folder and then okay. you can classify like okay that. great great like, and if you guys have used tf as a data module they do something similar they take the file names as they yeah do. yeah yeah so tf dot data module also and the in the keras also they do the same okay yeah so the directory name will be the label and the file name will be the key basically in our case. Earlier for MNIST, wasn't it like the file name was the label itself? For mm -hmm. MNIST. Okay, for I'm MNIST sure. PNG, I have seen on GitHub that the directory name is the label. But yeah. the old MNIST data set IDX source one had mm -hmm. file names as the labels. And it was just one single directory. Uh, yeah. I don't so, remember. I played it around, played yeah. it, but played around with it a lot of time over now. Yeah. So the data was like this, but when we are using them with the TensorFlow and the Keras, so what we had to do was shift all the images that are nine dot PNG something like that in the one single folder and label them as nine. And so we have to pre-process basically that to use with TensorFlow and Keras. Mm. That was the case with that. Yeah, and I think, yeah. and I think this is why. Okay, so all of this is is exactly why we went with the approach that we did because there was too many too many ways we could possibly structure the directories and the files. So let's let's get this done in the way that it is, and then there's definitely a better way to do it. Um, but we'll do that after we get this get this working because all we need to really do is get this prediction flow working right now, and then and then we'll be um, we'll be you know merrily on our way. Um, so okay, all right, all right. So that's, I made the note, um, and I should make that note bigger and bolder, because that's not obvious. Um, 
let's make actually let's make a separate issue for this. So because we're gonna we're gonna forget about this if we don't, because um, this is this is sort of a, a complex. It's more complex than it seems. Um, okay, so after um, mnist is complete. Uh, okay, so source uh, directory. At the risk of repeating another issue name, directory source. Like, uh, why are we insisting on using a source? Wouldn't it? I think it will make more sense to have this in the data pro operation part. Then you could maybe have a file name distro, so we can let the user decide what he wants to do. With it. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um. Yeah, and but that that also so. Yeah, that's so that ties into the pre-processing source actually, um, yeah. and and obviously what the goal with this guy was basically just you you define some you define some something right, and and then that that you can throw it through a data flow right. You take a source and it it wraps some other source, and then and then you throw all of that through a data flow. Um, and so you could take like a directory and then and then use the data flow to decide what to do. Uh, I think that just I th I think that that this is sort of a use case where we're targeting users who need things more pre-canned, um, right? Than 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 are willing to to mess with the data flow, right? Because um, I think that 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 we've got sort of two two audiences right now. It's 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 people who want to do machine learning out of the box really easily, right, with the command line. And then we have people who, and there's there's less of these people, but there are people who are interested in like how do you use this data flow stuff um, to to do interesting things. Um, and and the CLI people, um, I I don't think they are are. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be quite intuitive enough. So I think we'll want to actually do. We will want to actually make this source. Um, so let's just put this. We'll make this issue and and we'll revisit after we've, uh, after we've, after we've um, implemented the the current flow, right? Because let's we'll finish the prediction as is, um, stay the course of action, and then and then revisit. Um, okay. So. Milestone. Good discussion. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's see. So and let me make a note in the meeting minutes as well. So we'll finish CSV source modification. Uh, then revisit directory source. Wow, I can't spell the day. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. Great, great, great. All right, is that all? We're are we good on uh, MNIST for now then? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty clear now for what I have to do next. Cool, cool. All right, let's see. Um, so who's on deck? Who wants to go next? Anybody? Okay, so. Cool. If there's anything else you want to tell me, uh, uh, you can you tell me on Gitter? Because, yes. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and I, you can drop. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Always feel free to drop when when we're done because I know I know we we end up going long sometimes. So have a good one. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. We're probably going long today. So sorry, guys. But um, but yeah. Okay. So let's do um. So Agen, I haven't gotten the chance to really look at this yet. Um, what you posted up um, with the subflows, um, but I did start to skim it. Um, so I don't. I guess I don't really have much I can say here yet. Do you have anything that you wanted to talk to me about before I give it a, a more full uh, review to see what's going on? Did Augen drop? All right. Um, well, whenever I double tap, did I drop? Can you guys hear me? 
Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, we can. Yeah. Right, let's see. Okay, Agen's back. Hey, yeah, Agen. My connection just dropped. No worries. Did you want to? Yeah. Did you have anything? Did uh? So basically, what I was saying is. I haven't gotten the chance to do a full like review of this yet, but it also looks like you're you're heavily in, in debug mode, right? Um, so, did you have any things? I can't I can't remember what you said this morning. Um, let's see. Oh, what is parameter set? Oh gosh, yeah. So parameter set. Okay, so let me let me just answer these questions real quick here. So, what is parameter set? Parameter set is um, parameter set is all the inputs bound to their respective names for that operation right so you're saying this the and and the reason why parameter set is different than input set is well in, input set is anytime there's new inputs into the network it's it's whatever came in that time right parameter set is okay this operation takes these different definitions named these different arguments right and so each of those argument names is one of the parameters um, so we assign the uh, you know we assign a value uh, just like we have that input structure we have the parameter structure which is very similar to the input structure and it, it basically says okay like you know for this operation this is the the key uh, value mapping that Basically, like so, if you had two, if you had two arguments that are the same definition, you okay. have to. So that's that's where you make all the combinations of the. Yeah, arguments. exactly. That's yeah. That's where you're doing all the permutations. Yeah. So you 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 create a parameter set for each permutation, um, and then then you can know which ones you've used and not used, right? Um, so does that clear that guy up? Uh, and uh, the thing is. Uh, I, so uh, now the input seems like it's getting forwarded, but I don't think like when I get pull it out now with get single, I can get it from the data flow, mm -hmm. but it's not being used for the other functions. Okay, so it's and, not. Is it not going um, into the subflow? Like, did you did it hit? It's going into the subflow because uh, when I just add get single, just get that output. I'm getting the output from that subflow, uh -huh. but it's not going into the other thing. And from this discussion, I think is does that have something to do with the parameters here, which I passed? Sorry, I'll say just, say again. I think I passed. I like I didn't know what parameters it was, so I just copy paste the code from above. So it might have something to do with that. Okay. Yes, it's probably probably uh, probably. Um, so let's see. In memory, in memory, like uh, it is in I'm memory. Adding it, I'm adding it to the. Input network context. Yeah. Okay. Like here. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Oh, that. Yeah, and that. Where are we in here? Let's see. Where is this? What function is this? Oh, run dispatch. Okay. Okay. In run dispatch. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, so, um, okay, so, okay, so run dispatch is where we're running um, one of basically we run the operation. This is uh, like run dispatch has been scheduled asynchronously, so it basically says you know run run this when you can, right? When there's when there's no blocking, I or like next time next time the CPU is free, right? So then we we go and and we and it. Uh, for every operation that needs to be run with a parameter set, like it, we call run dispatch, right? And so we've dispatched the operation, and then eventually the event loop will run the operation. Um, so this is uh, so we run it, and then we grab the outputs, and then what? Then we add all the outputs back into the network, right? So. What we want to do is instead of forwarding to the subflow right here, uh, we want to whenever we get new inputs, we want to forward to the sub. We want to forward to the subflow instead of like instead of whenever we add new inputs because we might get inputs from different places, right? Like if all of a sudden uh, someone adds, uh, this is not the only thing that can add inputs to the network, right? So if some of the inputs are seed inputs, right? 
I actually ran into that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I that's... We only have whatever, some operation outputs. Yeah. So, so if we do it down in... Um, if we do it down here in initialize data flow, come on, come on, come on. Basically, we'll want to do it in run operations for CTX, I believe. Um, uh, I think let's see, this is run. Yeah, sorry, this is like a big. This is <laughs> to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. <laughs> this is this was not easy to figure out how to make this work. Um, um, but it it sort of works, it right? Some tools to do this to like walk through the whole thing. Yeah. I'll start after some one hour, I'll be like fed up. I'll stop. Then I'll continue like way later. Yeah. By that time, I'll forget what's happening. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's it's not it's not I guess, like No, it's like very smart. There's like lot of inheritance happening. I had to actually had to get a pen and paper and draw stuff. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks. Let's see. Um. Let me just view the file because this is not working. Okay. Okay. So it could be a lot cleaner, but right, come on. Um, okay. So basically, here, this is like my computer's being weird. Sorry. It's not scrolling correctly. So in here is right for one for one of those contexts which is like ictx um we're running we're running the operations within that in that little sub loop right um and so this is where we're waiting this input set enters network is whenever you say you know ictx.add it will come out through ictx.added um and so if an input set enters the network, this is where we're waiting for it to, um, this is this is where we're waiting for those, anytime it gets added, we're waiting for it here in this loop. Um, and basically when there's no more operations running or when there's no more, or yeah, when there's no more operations running and there's no more um, inputs in the queue, we're gonna just stop running, like that's when we're done, right? Um, and so, we we go through and we look at all the we look at all the tasks that just finish and we handle the exceptions and then we say okay if this is the one where we're getting a new input then we go through we create the parameter set pairs and we dispatch the operation so what's going to want to happen so what's that, that what type of input set networks is it like any stop input sets uh sorry say that again you cut out a little bit uh, input set networks what's the data type input set um like input set in this network. Oh, new input sets. Uh, you mean new input sets? What's the data type? No, no, input set in this network, no. Like that. This variable. guy? No, 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 the one on top. A leaf task is input set in. Like, uh, can you go go to the top? Like, yeah. said we await for the inputs now. Like uh, that part. This part, OK. Uh, I think they all create task. Set. Oh, create task. Oh, oh. So what does that return? So, so this this returns a task object, um, and so this is an async IO object. So, so you say, yeah, added as a coroutine, right? So anything with async in front of it becomes a coroutine, which is like you know you called the function, but the function doesn't run until you actually run that coroutine. You await that coroutine. So when we say create task, we're saying okay, async IO, go schedule this thing. Um, whenever you can, and return me the task object, which will tell me when that was done. Um, so, so then we added. It's a, what? Sorry. It's like a future object. Yeah, it's like a future. It's basically a future. Yeah, it's like the newer version of a future. Um, so then we add it to the list of tasks, yeah. and in. So how do you get the inputs out of this? You do so. It's task or dot result, right? So task dot result. So we say when we're going through all these tasks, so we use this wait method to say, you know, whatever one first completed, then let's deal with it. And then we say, okay, so if the input set, if it's the if the task that just completed is the one a new input set into the network, then grab the result, and the result is basically going to be like. Is there more of these things? Like, did did I get multiple new input sets at once? Um, so should I just rerun the loop right away? And you know, what are the list of new input sets? So it, it tries to just like give you all of them at once if there was a bunch of them. 
Um, uh, so that's what we want to add to the subflow, right? Yes, exactly. So then you say four new input set and new input sets because it just dumped all of the pending ones to you, um, which I'm not sure if really more is needed in this context actually, but it's, that's what's going on at least. So, so you go through each of the new input sets and you say, okay, give me the parameter set pairs and dispatch the operations, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, this stuff where you've added um so that you move the yeah i think we'll want to move that down here and with that parameter set let's see um okay uh let's see yeah well the parameter set gets scheduled but the thing is oh yeah okay so the thing is if we're forwarding, we probably need to have like two modes of forwarding. We probably need to have a mode of forwarding that says, um, hmm. uh, okay, so this is the other thing is there's this redundancy checker, right? And the redundancy checker checks what things have been run and what things still need to be run, right? Um, and so, the question in my mind right now is basically, uh, if we forward the input, um, do we care about it within the context of the parent, right? And I'm guessing that there's there's two situations here, and we probably need to be do able we to... Have to. What? Uh, should we care about that? Do we like a new input which the subflow is getting, right? So That's what I'm wondering. No... I yeah. think it should be independent. That you think it should be sense. independent? Yeah, I think yeah, we should yeah, probably allow it to be configurable, right? So we would we probably want to have a setting like within this within this structure that you've created here, the forward. Um, we probably want to have something, right? So you've got book, which is my guess is um, uh, the instant yeah, name, name and then the definitions to forward. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then we probably want something that. Sorry, excuse me. Um, let's see. So there's there's two cases, right? There is I don't care about anything that gets forward. To just let the subflow deal with it. Um, okay. And then there's I do care about things that get forwarded. I also want to use them within the parent flow, right? Um, uh, I I don't. I still I'm not sure what the two instances. I get one is independent. Yeah. Like when we forward an input, both the parent and the subflow will get that input, right? Yeah. Yeah. The question is, do I do I want to do anything with it in the parent, right? Or do I just want to forward it? Because um, because oh, okay. if I don't want to do anything with it, I don't need to add it to the redundancy checker, right? Oh, because oh, I'm never okay. going to use it. Um, if I do want to do something with it, then I need to start adding it to the redundancy checker. But I only really need to add it to the redundancy checker if it's being used as a parameter, um, because we add the parameter sets themselves to the redundancy checker. Uh, sorry, I'm making this too confusing. It's the 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 uh, basically I would say. Uh, it's like, uh, do you want that input in your parent flow, or you just want to forward that? Input? Yeah, that's. I mean, basically, that's okay. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I think at this, I think like really. What happens if we have? Yeah, continue, continue. Basically, I think what you've got is probably good, right? And we'll what we'll just say is that you know, okay, so I got these. What you'll do is you'll say, okay, I got a new input set, right? Okay, are any of these inputs in the list of inputs that I wanted to forward? Okay, if they are, mm -hmm. then. Just for you know, do do exactly what you've done here, right? Forward them, um, and if they aren't, then do I uh, pass them to that parameter set pairs function, or do I not, right? So you would say basically you would have some other variable within book or within another property that says like drop or not, right? And or like parent cares about something like that. I don't know some some better word, right? And so if the parent does care about them, then you're going to use it within the operation parameter set pairs. If your parent doesn't care about it, then you drop it, right? 
you drop it from so, the input uh, set. What if there are no parameters? That what if there are no operations which don't use the input? Then will it get automatically dropped? Like as as of the current implementation. I mean, yeah. If you don't have any operations that use the input, then then it's not gonna, you know, it won't it it won't run anything. The result will be a no op, right? Um, so. Yeah, it won't. I mean, it won't do anything right now. So I guess it. Yeah, so let's just not worry about it for add now. I guess. Add an extra parameter to drop it again. Yeah, let's just not worry about it. I mean, because because what I mean, what'll end up happening is if somebody adds another thing, they'll realize that oh, my you know that input's getting like that operation's getting run because yeah. I was forwarding yeah, to the subflow, but it's also getting run. Know. Yeah, but then you know you could always just change the input flow. Right, the the data flow dot flow parameter to not have that happen, right? Um, because you have the ability to say, okay, where do all the inputs come from, right? And if you don't list that as a source, like if you if you change the right right by default, it says, okay, everything can come from seed, and it will. You could just say, you know, you could just assign that to some other random thing, like like never use, right? And then as long as the or origin is never never use, or like you know, you could you could assign it to say only take inputs from these operations outputs, and then we wouldn't have to deal with this dropping the forwarding stuff. Um, so basically, I guess just just continue as you were. Don't worry about don't worry about dropping it from the parent flow. It it there's other ways around that, I guess. Um, does that all sound good? Oh, again has gone. I wish it gave a little ding when somebody dropped. <laughs> I can't tell when I'm still talking. It's, it's like, we, we never know when we're still talking to somebody who hasn't been here. Let's see. Um, hey, Agen. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. So uh, no worries. Okay. So does this? I mean, it's. Not, I think we're on the same page, right? Uh, I I did, I couldn't hear what you mentioned. Okay. So yeah. See, so I was uh, wondering. It gets dropped, uh, anyways, man. So yeah, it gets dropped anyways. Yeah. Basically, I think I I was I was getting a little too concerned about that. We don't. We I don't think we need to worry about it, right? Like, let's uh let's get it working, and then if it if we run into walls, then then we'll fix them when we get there. But also. But also the you know the data flow dot flow parameter um, that basically mm -hmm. defines we we list out what are all the possible sources of inputs uh, for any given operation right for any given parameter within any operation and so if you don't explicitly list um, like you know if if you say I'm only allowed this parameter is only allowed to get its inputs from this operation's output, then it's not even going to affect you, right? The fact that we're, yeah, yeah. that we're forwarding. So, so we should be fine. This will be really yeah. exciting. Um, I'm very excited about this. And, uh, one more question. What's actually origin? I'm confused. About What's origin? Yeah. Okay. So origin is meant to be, so, so for example, the, the default origin of any, any parameter is seed, right? Um, so any any input object you create, I think it, it, the default argument defaults to seed, and that basically is just saying um, right. Seed seed was a, a term that I chose because that's a common thing that, that people. Uh, if you guys have played, you guys have played Minecraft, right? Or like the random seed, right? So if you if you set a random seed, then like all that stuff is like set at the beginning, and and you know it's it's uh, it's 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 part of what what is used every time at, at the beginning right if you're generating a bunch of series of random numbers then if you choose the same seed you're going to get all the same outputs so these are like the same the same values that get added to the data flow every time would be like the seed values right um so then if we're thinking about like okay so what is the origin the default origin is just like you know the seed that's just because that's just what we've been using but you know the origin once it comes from another operation the origin is uh what was the the output from that operation that that created it uh that didn't really make sense let's see let me give you a concrete example here um 
let's see. Um, bam. Uh, where am I? Okay. Uh, where is this thing? Uh, initializing data flow. Uh, okay, I was in the middle of something. Um, let's see, where's the best, how's the best way I can, can demonstrate this? Uh, probably the calculator example. Right, so test, test df. Okay. Um, test data flow. No, come on. Where is. Okay, test orchestrator. Test, test orchestrator. Okay, cool. So, this is the example with the calculator, right? It's basically like you parse a line, you. Um, you run the calculation. Um, so let me go just add some logging real quick. So DF of ML, DF memory, uh, input set. Okay, so debug. Okay, so um, what did we want to look at? We wanted to look at the origins of origins for item in stuff that inputs origin is. All right, well, I guess it'll tell us, but whatever. Um, all right, so, uh, okay, great, perfect. So, um, every time, so like we ran the add, so we ran the add operation in the processing stage, Here's what, here, these were the inputs, um, that was the output is sum, right, and the value is 42, so now we created a new input set um, with those outputs, and we're saying, okay, this is a new input, the value is 42, the definition is the result, and the origin is sum, uh, the sum property of the add operation, right, the sum output property of the add operation. So that's, so basically, if, if we're, um, like when we rewire um, the I mean that's that's basically what it is. It's it's where did it come from, right? So it it came from the add operation and it came from the uh, sum property within the resulting output dict, right? Does that make sense, or are you sort of looking for something more? Um, do you see? What I'm saying here, I or add something else, but I forgot what it is. I'm pretty sure I will need to take in. I'll just ask it on. Okay. Okay. Cool. But yeah, basically, so this is the add operation, and then you know the value of 42 is from the sum property of the resulting output dict, right? So we say the origin is add operation, and then it's sum, right? From add. Um. Let's see. Um, uh oh, I forgot to start. Keep taking notes. Crap. Okay. Well, we have the recording. Um, all right. Um, so, does that sort of give you enough uh, to go off of here yeah. for like next steps, or do you want to talk about other things here? Oh, I'll finish this. Thing. I want to see this more because it takes care of some other stuff also. Yeah. So exactly. This is gonna. Yeah, this is going to simplify a lot of things. <laughs> we can just throw, yeah, it's especially nice because now then you don't have to like build that um, for run data flow. We can, yeah, yeah I think you don't have to build the flow inputs. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other thing is that what we'll need is we'll need a way to just kick off that thing right away. Um, right, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're running. The parent data flow you're also running that child data flow right so 
right? Because right, if, if you've started the parent data flow, you want to be immediately forwarding things to that sub data flow, almost like we want to run that operation right I away. Think, uh, we can just add an empty dictionary as flow input in the seed and it should get the run. Ah, yes, the there you go. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Um, but also, so... I but, think I'm doing that in the test. Oh, okay. Uh, I wrote it as for this. Yeah. Uh, that's... I kind of wanted to have that something similar to that preprocessing thing. Nice. Uh, I just, uh, this thing just normalizes whatever vector and we yeah. it into a matrix of 2 by 2. Sweet. And I that's... think I'm kickstarting the data flow by passing an empty dictionary. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's funny because that's also exactly what we need to do to we need to normalize the MNIST stuff eventually. So yeah, I kind of thought of that. <laughs> nice. Okay, sweet. Okay, this is this will be great. Yeah, this is coming along nicely. Nice job with this. Um, this is tricky stuff. I'm sorry that it's not more commented. I've just been so busy lately. Um, I have this uh, other. Uh, it it made sense after I read that single your documentation. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. I, I, I kind of used your code for one of my assignments. I had a network assignment, Yay. like simulating go back and protocol. So I just copy pasted one that task thing to know. Hell yes. So whenever I have to send a packet, I just added that as a task. Great, great, great. That's the way to do it. Awesome. I'm glad it helped. I uh, there's there's this one thing I wanted I wanted to do some container. The one thing that's really missing from this right now is the fact that if you create a bunch of sub processes, you're gonna lock up whatever machine you're on. And so there's this one task that's open that says um, uh, the the issue title is like a Cap system. Yeah, the cap the running context. Yeah. And so basically, and then there's also another issue that's open called system local resource management. And what that really means is like, basically, we need a way to do things so that, because there's like, when you're running these things, if you just start calling the async IO sub process create within any of these operations, you're just going to create a million processes, right? Because it just like if you end up with a million operations that get run, it's going to create a million processes and your machine is going to lock up because it's like, I don't, you know, I don't have enough CPU to run all these processes at once. So what we really need to do is like make it so that, okay, I can only run this many processes at one time or like I can only run this many sub contacts at one time, like maybe cap it to the number of threads or something. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll be able to avoid that. And, and then you'll pretty much be able to use this thing for like whatever you need to do, like this general event loop. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's fun stuff. Event loops are fun. Cool. Um, yeah, is there hard anything? To debug, but yeah. Hard to debug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the idea is like once you, once you get it right though, it's really easy to debug, right? Um, it's just like when you're constructing the event loop initially and you're like, okay, how do all these things get forwarded? And like, what are, you know, what, what is, what is the right way to dispatch things and stuff like that? That's, that's really hard. So hopefully that's, that's a lot of the idea here is like simplify that, right? Um, so anything else on this or anything from you, Wagen, that you wanted to talk about? Or I still owe you the exporting, but I've, I've been working on unifying the config and and, uh, and I have gotten really really nowhere yet in figuring out what the best way to do that is. So. We can do that, of course. I don't think we have any. We merged config loader also, right? So yeah. we just have that example. So we can hold that up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And that'll work great. I just, I just meant I still owe you the exporting for that other pull request. Um, and once we finish all this, I think we can make that a little better also, the subflow prediction and all this thing. Yeah, yeah. That'll, yeah, that'll be exactly, this will, this will simplify that as well, this, this one you've got work in progress here, so that'll be great. Um, okay, so, uh, so let's see. Uh, Himachu, did we cover everything you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah, so we covered everything. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'll let this uh, wobble a little bit, then I will uh, put a message if there is any problem. Okay. And then I, I, I'll I, go try to do a more thorough review of that one, and then I don't think Rahul's gotten around to it, but I, I did ping him the other day, so we'll pull a bit. Um, yeah, uh, don't do it now. I will push once, then uh, do it, because I have changed a few things. Okay. So I will push, and then you review that. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, great. And then, uh, 
So, no, don't assign this John Whiteman. Wrong John. It's like, I don't know how many times it has to tell. I've never assigned to John Whiteman once, and it keeps wanting to assign to him. Um, come on, Google. Okay, so, and then Yash. Um, and Yash, I don't know your last name, but not our mentor Yash, unless our mentor Yash has anything he wants to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to see, like, ask you whether you have checked those models I we discussed last week. Oh yeah, I did. I did some spend some time poking around there, and they look uh, like good stuff. I needed to, um, I needed to add another idea to the ideas page. That's going to be just you know like basically add some add some models like people have been doing, right? Because that's definitely a valid idea, um, and it's it you know it's 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 what we do. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, I didn't I didn't have any like immediate really you know thoughts on them other than that they look good. So. All right. And that's what, that is all I wanted to ask. Yeah, they looked like they'd be helpful stuff to add, right? Like, it's always good to, to wrap some more libraries. So. Cool. Yeah, I, I look for an issue because I just got time from my college stuff and I, oh, I awesome. try to work on something too. Awesome. Great. Yeah, I think then, and I don't know if you saw the new system, um, but basically, uh, I tried to, I tried to, God, so the tests are failing because I need to push the new package because I tried to push the new package and it can't push to a non-existent package. Um, let's see, uh, contributing. I try to add these things to where you can basically like pick out how much time you have. So if you don't have very much time, you can grab an extra short issue. Uh, if you've got lots and lots of time, you can rewrite, rewrite the whole code base in Rust, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the system local resource manager and cap number of executing contacts. Um, but yeah, um, so that's basically, I was just, just trying to make it easier for people to pick off whatever size task they have that they, you know, have that's, time to do. So that's good. So, yeah. yeah. And then also, you know, you can always ping me if you're, if you're like, all of these things look, look like, uh, look like I forgot, you know, if I forgot some other thing or, you know, you just know what to do, obviously. So cool. Yeah. Just, just ping me, whatever. So, okay. Great. Thanks, Yash. All right. Um, so, uh, John, uh, John, one more, one more. Thing. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, UI? Uh, yeah. Sorry. One. Go for it. Uh, what about web UI? Oh, the web UI. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. I also owed you guys some documentation on 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 getting up and running with the web UI. I think I still have that from last week. Yes. Documentation. Immediate next steps. Let me recopy paste this. Um, so. Uh, so memory and web UI. So the web UI. Um, we can and we can kind of like just look at it real quick here, and I can show you guys exactly what. Um, what what I'm talking about, but so this is obviously the web UI in its current state. Um, the only page that works is this settings page and the uh, sources page. So this does actually work, which is cool. I found this thing that basically mocks your back end and like intercepts all your HTTP requests so that uh, you it basically all of this stuff is actually like trying to go hit the API. Um, and then if you run the HTTP server and you set the backend URL to whatever your HTTP server is, it will actually list all the files. Um, although the uploading doesn't work yet. And then the next things we need to do is we basically just need to go through and figure out, uh, you know, how do we implement all of these various different uh, pages here? Um, and so, really what that's going to look like is is we need to, to come up with some sort of like generic form creator right we'll need some sort of react component that that takes the output of those args methods and builds a form um, where we accept the appropriate data types and then when we save the form we'll, we'll you know go create the the specific instance of whatever that the ffml object is or plugin is right um, by hitting the http server api um, and so all of this stuff is of course documented um, you know that the, the how to do react stuff is not documented that's what I need to document but all the HTTP doc documentation exists um, so like this is the files URL this is really the only one that works right now um, and it just lists all the file names and what their sizes are 
Um, and so what we'll need to do is we need to do things like, okay, so when we go to the configure page for, uh, I should have opened both at the same time. Um, so, uh, it doesn't really matter, but when we go to the, the configure page for sources, it'll, you know, want to have a drop down of like, what type of source do you want to configure, right? And then it will, you know, it'll, it'll return to us this giant, uh, this giant JSON object where it's like, okay, well, you can have a CSV, right? And then here's like a uh, CSV source, right? And so, and then this is just an artifact of the way that the, the config stuff works, but then it says, you know, CSV source, CSV. And then it'll, you know, here's all the parameters, like the file name, read, write is a bool. And actually, did we change? Oh, you did change this. Great. You updated this too. Thank you for updating this. <laughs> I wouldn't have caught that. Um, and then allow empty, right? So we'll just parse all of these things and we'll create a form, like a, a UI based form out of that. Um, and, 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 and so we'll just need like, you know, like if, there's something that's, uh, if it's a bool, it'll be a radio button, right? Like a little check or uncheck or like a checkbox, right? It'll be checked or not checked. And so we'll need to create all these UI components that, that will fill out the form for any of these given things. So if I select from the dropdown CSV, we need to create a form populated by these things um, to accept those data types. Um, and then, you know, you hit save and you hit this URL and it, it configures the source on the server side. Um, basically all we're doing is just making a page to interact with each of these API endpoints, right? Um, and so whatever UI stuff makes that easiest to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a lot. yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Um, but yeah, so, and, and I'm probably, uh, I'm, so I think I'm, I'm probably going to do some heavy work on this within the next week or two here. Um, my birthday's coming up on, on Friday here, so I, I'm going to have some stuff to do there. And, and then I, uh, I've got, I'm, I'm, I think I told you guys I'm getting married at an end of March, so I have a lot of wedding stuff I'm trying to get done. Um, but yeah. <laughs> things, things are busy. <laughs> um, so yeah, things, things are busy to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of things to do. Yeah, yeah, we need to like write vows and write what the person is saying that that's marrying us and stuff. So, so there's there's lots to get done. Um, but but I'm gonna try. I'm like damned if I won't try to get this web UI to a point where I can demo it because I think I told you guys some people wanted to interview me on on uh, two different podcasts, um, and I'm gonna be talking about DFFML. And uh, so I was hoping that I could have at least, um, you know, we could, we could, I'm, I feel like there's a disconnect when I tell people about this and I, you guys probably have felt the same thing where you're like, oh, you know, like it helps you make machine learning models and do machine learning and people go like, okay, I don't really understand what that means. Right. So I'm hoping that once we get this web UI, we can sort of like create a quick little video like you know put that as a gif on the front page and things like that and and people will be like oh now i understand like what i can do with this um because it's you know it's kind of it, people there seems to be some some disconnect going on um uh, maybe i'm not good at explaining it maybe you guys have more luck than me um but i'm hoping that the web ui will be good and and so i'm hoping to have it before those two interviews which are two weeks from now and three weeks from now um uh, because you know then if people google it then then they'll be easier 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 onboarding for them right um who knows if anybody will listen but right well we gotta try <laughs> So, and then I also told you guys I was trying to make that, that flashy marketing email and that goes along with that is, is how do we make it more, more accessible, but yeah. Um, and I'll, so I'll, I'll try to write some more documentation and we'll get back to that soon. But yeah, so, uh, Yash, um, Yash, how do you, uh, the, Yash, how do you say your last name? Yeah. Vashni, it's Vashni. Vashni? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So Yash Vashni, um. Is uh how how's how's it going? And is this your first time joining us on the meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my first time. Hey, welcome on. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um. So yeah. So let's see this pull request that you put up that pull request, right? Or no, we were just yeah. going back and forth on the uh, on the uh, the GoLang CI stuff. Yeah. 
it was so super weird that uh, it ran actually it, there were errors in the uh, the test case but it showed okay that was making me worried <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that'll make you nervous for sure yeah okay hey looking good this looks great it looks like you're definitely on the right track here this all looks you know on first glance it looks right to me um let's see okay so yeah. I think I have misplaced the file. Where should I place the uh, uh, test file, the CRI resource manager file? Oh, okay. So yeah, that's a, that's the other thing. So your um, can you submit a pull request? Um, I'm not I'm not quite sure how to do it with uh, with. Uh, let's see. I mean, you have the console, right? So you can do um, yeah. you can do. Actually, can you share your screen, maybe? Uh, I am not aware of that presently. How to do that? Are you on? Uh, are you on a on a on a desktop or your phone or? Yeah, I am on desktop. Presently. Okay. Let's see. Are you using Firefox? Or I think it's the three. The three. Um, can you see mine? I can. See. Yeah, it should be up here. Yeah. Actually, I was working on Gitpod. Uh, I have set up the whole environment in the Gitpod. And okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking we might be able to push it up. Let's see. But you could try. You know, you can try doing like here. Let me paste it in the Gitter commands too. So, um, so uh, Git status. Git at. Oh, we don't want to do Git at a. So. Let's see. Yeah, you're going to want to do, let's see, what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to do probably like git add um, example or, ooh, but if you place that thing in there, we're not going to want to do that. We don't want to add, uh, so, right, when you say git add, it's going to add everything, um, yeah. like whatever path you give, and we don't want to add that whole, <laughs> that whole sub-project there. Yeah, it, um, yeah sure. Let's see, stored CRA research manager file. So, oh, it'll probably be fine. Because uh, the basic idea of uh, what we do in Git uh, Golang, we will do it the same in the Rust as well as in the uh, JavaScript. Exactly. The whole idea is same. Exactly. And you, I think you've caught on now to what's going on here, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I, I finally got it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we grab the tool and then we just run the tool on, on whatever um, package. So actually, here we go. This might be good. The command, actually, the, the, the CLI usage command, um, yeah. that, try running that, actually. Um, okay. In the, just copy paste that because you did a good job of okay. changing the formatting to the correct thing there. So. Yeah. I'll try. I, I'll try, and I will uh, update you with that. Okay, cool. And if you do, yeah, actually, just if you paste the output of um, the log debug, um, right? So if you if you run this whole thing and then and then and then paste in the output um, to Gitter, uh, then that that like that'll let us know whether it's working or not for sure. Um, yeah, sure, sure. And then the other thing is that exception. So when you do the raise exception, um, so pass pass standard error to it. Um, yeah, I did it. Uh, oh, okay, you did do I it. I okay. tried that also, and there was no exception. The standard output length was not zero. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Well, hmm, yeah, so that's good. I mean, if standard output, if standard output length is zero, and this is also like, that may work, that may not work, right? Um, yeah. It depends on whether the tool decides to output errors to standard output or standard error. The other thing is that uh, when you're doing len issues here, I think we want to do uh, len. Let me let me just. I think it needs to be uh, len issues um, issue or issues. Um, and let's see. Did I do? I think it needs to be that, uh, which is in the chat. But let me just scroll back up to that little askinima thing that I sent a while ago, um, because I think let's just check this out here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Let's 
see if we can scroll to the top here. Okay, wait. Uh, crap. Okay, yeah. So, um, so you're gonna when you JSON loads, right? You're getting this object, right? And the this object has this issues key, and it has the linters that it ran, I think, at the very end, right? And that's that list. So what we want to do yeah. is we want to take the length of this key here, yeah. right? Yeah, because oh. then every index is one of the issues. Okay, sure. I'll do that. Sweet, yeah. Um, and then I think that will be, you know, that'll, that should give us the appropriate number of issues then, because or else I think it'll just output two every time. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Cool. Oh, that's very exciting. That'll be our first thing that will lead us into doing multiple languages. And actually, uh, um, I was talking to some people here, here at my work, and and we're gonna try to try to. Um, this is gonna it's gonna go a lot. This is gonna be a lot of data flow stuff going on here that we're gonna have to figure out. But basically. Um, well, there's not going to be a lot of data flow stuff that we have to figure out. But basically, all we need to do now is, I think there was, there's an existing set of operations that, that figures out what are the line, like, what is the language of this thing. Um, that that ex requires that external tool. So we might just, like, count file names and things like that or look for key files like the setup.py or a package.json or... Uh, like Go files, and we know it's a Go repo, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to write another operation that tells us what language is this project written in, and then uh, then we'll kick off an appropriate subflow where yeah. the operations that get run are, are particular to whatever language that is, right? Um, so that'll be, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, and that's, then, that's actually cool. Yeah, it'll be really cool, right? You'll be able to take this thing and point it at any piece of code, and and you would know, you would, you know, you'd you'd have all the static analysis run on it, right? Um, yeah, and sure. and that'll be pretty fun. So, yeah, cool. All right, great. Um, so it sounds like you're. So if you can submit that pull request, um, then and you can just put you know WIP in the title, uh, and and then I'll try to I'll try to you know, let's see. Yeah, so. Run this command. Give us the output. Um, so let's see. Uh, Golang ci lint uh, run uh, from command line with logging. Uh, let us let us know the output in Gitter, um, and then also post pull request. So we can review and comment. Yeah, uh, sure. Sweet. Is there anything else? I mean, it sounds like you've you uh, you recently sort of got this thing rolling better. So, um, oh, and you are also asking where should you store the file? Um, yeah, the cache file. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very good question. Um, oh, oh, oh. That's the cached download stuff that that I had mentioned. That's right. I forgot about that almost. Um, I yeah, I also didn't tabs. understand the concept of the download cons. Uh, yeah. The issue. So yeah, that wasn't. It's not incredibly clear. So let's see. Um, test source. Test IDX. So basically, um, so what's going on here is that there's this. We, we added this cache download function, and uh, what it does is it takes a URL and then uh, where you want to download it to, um, and then what, what the hash of the file should be. So, and a, and a hash is an is a immutable, um, uh, it's, an, it's an immutable representation of the contents of the file. So, like, if the contents of the file change, then the hash, is, then the hash for the file change changes. Um, so, basically, that, then we, we can download files, and we'll know that we're working with the right, right file if the hash is, is correct. Um, so what we want to do is we want to write our test cases to use this cache download um, decorator, which is anything with the at uh, as a decorator. Um, and so you're just going to call that, basically you call this function, you say at cache download, and then you pass the URL 
to what you want to download. You pass uh, where you want to download it to, which is going to be the same same format as this. We're going to just say like uh, so pathlib.path. So file is the path to the file that we're currently running. So wherever test source test idx is on disk, that's going to be file. Um, and so dot parent would be the directory that it that file is in. So test source. So you know if that's under your home folder, it's going to give you the whole path to that. Um, it's going to be this, right? And then uh, with this path libs objects, you can say slash, and then that'll combine it um, with the correct directory combining. Uh, uh, slashes whether on the windows or linux because on windows obviously they do two backslashes and we on linux and os x mac we we do one forward slash right um okay. so this basically says okay so download take this file right and this is the other confusing part about this is that we're i defined these up here um, and then I use them down here as the arguments. Where you see a star, it's expanding the, uh, the array into those arguments. Um, so basically this becomes the first argument, this becomes the second argument, this line, and this becomes the third argument. Um, so what you're going to do is, is you're going to want to find... So that's CR... Oh, sorry, my throat. Um, resource manager. <clears throat> so... We are going to want to take this download. Okay, so copy link address. So I know I'll format it here, but and you'll 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 get it next. Oh no no. Um, okay. So what we do is we basically take the commit um, and. GitHub provides this where if we say like dot tar, um, I think it will will it download it? No, it'll download a tar dot gz. So dot gz. Oh, can't do it. Okay. Come on. Dot uh, tar dot gz. And now it'll download for us. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to. Oh damn. Okay, that thing might need to be changed a little bit. Um, but basically what we'll do is we'll put this URL in here, right? So we'd say um, this is the first argument, right? And then it'll download that this file here. Um, and then you'll tell it where to download it to, right? So you just say the same thing. It would say like CIRI resource manager or something. And then you put the hash of this file. So when the first time you put it in, if you just put any whatever value you put for the third one, it's going to yell at you because it's not going to be right. And it's going to say, I expected this, but it should be this. So I'll just copy paste the error message of what it should be and now use that value, basically. Um, okay. And then, then the tricky part here is now that this is just set up for downloading files. So what we're going to need to do is... Um, so we're going to need to do DFFML, uh, util, uh, net. Yeah. So we're going to need to modify this function, this cache download function. Um, so target path, our write bytes. Um, let's see, how should we do target path, our write bytes? Uh, Hmm. So this is cache download, and that one's like, hmm. uh, I think I'm. This is, might be a little bit tricky, so I might I might make this function. Um, but basically, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna we're gonna have the same cache download, but we're gonna have it extract the contents of this directory. Um, right. So. Uh, and then the question, the question there is like, okay, is all the is all the contents correct, right? Um, so that mm, well, we might want to just like hash everything. We'll hash all the file names and everything, and just like check whether it's the correct extracted contents. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm just trying to think what is the best way to do this. Uh, um, uh, uh, let's see. This is kind of going to be like... What? 
Yeah, this was the heavy part which I wasn't uh, aware of. Yeah, let's. Why don't I just uh, write this function real quick to do this stuff? Because I I I have a pretty good idea of, of how this should work, and then you're going to call it in a similar way, and and I'll make a test case that calls it too, and then um. So for now, don't worry about it. Right, like just keep going the way you are. You could even start on the other operations if you finish this one. Um, send us that pull request. And then I'll yeah. give you a function that 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 extracts, because what we need is like cached, like cached extract download function, right? Which is going to take this this thing, extract it, and verify that the extracted contents are what they should be. So that's going to have to do a lot more hashing and verification and stuff like that. Um, and so uh, I've got I've got a lot of experience with that, so I can probably write that pretty quickly, and then and then you you can more quickly go with what you're doing, right? Um, so we because we want to we want to we want to keep things speedy. We don't want to we don't want to do things for no reason. So, um, so yeah. So I will get that to you. Let me make a an AR for myself here. Um, uh, let's see. So John to create uh, cached download extract function with example for yes. Um, okay, so let me just assign this to myself here real quick. Um, oops. Uh, okay, great. All right, so yeah, then just let us know how that's go. Basically, yeah, let us know what the logging looks like so we can verify that that thing did run correctly. And then um, post the pull request and, and I'll, I'll kind of fine tune things will we'll help you fine tune things and you'll probably then you'll probably very quickly move on to the next operation because my guess is you've you've got the feeling for how this works um right would yeah, would you yeah. say so yeah okay cool I, I i feel like i saw the 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 uh you know like when you have the the I feel like I could I could feel it click for you when I when I saw this message, so that's good. Um, yeah. So then the other thing is that you know the tricky part about this, like we ran into, is is finding something with errors, right? So because because yeah yeah, 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 part of this is okay. We're gonna run all these linters. Well, okay, like we need to, we need a test case first, right? And I just yeah yeah, yeah I I happened to run into I I, I knew that that. I had a suspicion that that project would not pass the linter thing, so then I went and found that one. The original one that I suspected did not, right? So, uh, and that's the same thing. I think I might have put some examples on the other issues, but those those quite likely uh, may not have issues, right? So uh, we'll have to figure that out. Um, yeah. But yeah, cool. Uh, anything else you wanted to ask me about or we wanted to talk about on the call here? No, no, that was all cool. Cool, great. All right. Hey, thanks for joining. It was great to have you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. All right. Anybody else got anything, or else I'll see you guys all next week then? Yeah, I'll see you next week then. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Good Bye. Night. Yeah. Same to you.